My name is Chong from Rutgers. I'll be presenting our work on revisiting the definition of sequential I.O. This is joint work with my colleagues at EMC's Princeton, New Jersey office when I was interned there. Uh, the paper title is written in pseudocode. Basically, it says that we claim sequential I.O. is poorly defined. Obviously, uh, sequential I.O. is an important concept a number of reasons motivated us to explore the definition of sequential I.O. First of all, uh, seek time for disk and uh, tapes matters. Many optimization techniques were made, made based on sequentiality to improve performance. Uh, there are many applications where, uh, that leverage uh, sequentiality, such as caching and prefetching. Second, Many non-rotational uh, devices favor sequential I.O. too. Large writes uh, for SSD matter because large writes can reduce SSD erasures, which can improve SSD lifespan. Finally, a clear sequentiality definition help classify workload characteristics, which can benefit system researchers, uh, trace analysis, and synthetic I.O. generation. In addition, a consistent sequentiality metric makes evaluation result more comparable. Many people think they know what sequential I.O. is. It sounds pretty straightforward. But as we will show in the later part of the talk, uh, sequentiality can change significantly depending on how you define it. First, let us look at how sequentiality is used in the literature. One example is taken from a SOSP paper. It says we consider two read or write requests to be sequential if they are consecutive in time, and the file offset plus the request size of the first request equals the file offset of the second request. This is the common definition of sequential accesses that probably matches most people's intuition. So we can do a survey here. How many of you think this is a good definition for sequential I.O.? Raise your hand. OK. Another example is from a Usenix ATC paper. It says we consider sequential I.O. as the number of bytes transferred before a random seek. This definition considers the I.O. size for sequential accesses. Again, how many of you think this is a good definition? OK. According to the vote so far, there are more people prefer the second definition, but there is no consensus. The third example is from a fast paper. It says, this series to be sequential despite the missing 1K between the third and the fourth request. It sounds like that the missing 1K can be con continued to be, be considered as a sequential axis, which is a variant of the first example. From this example and our survey, uh, the concept of sequential I.O. is not straightforward at all. It can be defined in many different ways. From literature, we found sequentiality is heavily used, but rarely defined, and defined in an inconsistent way. In our paper, we argue that sequentiality should be defined, and the system researcher should state which sequentiality definition they use. Our work adopts a data-driven approach to analyze hundreds of storage traces to compare sequentiality definitions. First, let us look at several sequential I.O. properties that might affect sequentiality metric. Let's go through some of the properties with the example. The canonical definition of sequentiality is the consecutive access ratio. Basically, it tracks the fraction of consecutive accesses. In the figures, the, each rectangle with the letter R represents request. The x-axis shows when they arrive, and the, the y-axis shows the start and the end of the request. The left figure shows a consecutive access ratio of 100%, and the right figure shows a 50%. We ignore the first axis to simplify calculation and we use the abbreviation CAR to represent consecutive access ratio. The previous metric is based on I.O. consecutiveness, but we think I.O. size is also important. 
intuitively the trace with more consecutive bytes accessed is more sequential than the trace with smaller accesses because more data processed before a random seek. The two figures shows essentially the same access pattern, but a simple metric like the consecutive access ratio would, would be failed to distinguish them. If we assume the IO size on the left is 8K and on the right is 4K, then the score of consecutive bytes accessed would be twice as large as on the left. We use the abbreviation CBA to represent consecutive bytes accessed. Next, we look at other properties along the spatial dimension. The left figure shows a bunch of accesses uh, that have no sequentiality by the definition of consecutive access ratio. But the left figure shows a regular strided pattern uh, with a fixed gap. Applications like database column accesses or join operations can cause such accesses. So, uh, Modern storage systems have uh, internal read head buffers, so uh, accesses with small strides are effecti effectively treated as a sequential. But the question remains though, uh, what type and what size of those strides are acceptable? The right figure shows other interesting uh, patterns. We're interested to see if backward seek can be treated as a sequential, and what is the right threshold of backward seeks, and if reaccess can be treated as sequential accesses. We generalize these patterns into a strided range property which allows gaps, small backward seeks, and reaccess of address to still be considered sequential. We use the abbreviation SR to represent strided range. Along the temporal dimension, we compare the following two examples. In, in multi-threaded programming or virtual, virtual machine environments, there's usually several threads or processes issuing requests to the storage. The left figure shows completely random accesses by the definition of consecutive access ratio. But if the stream information is available, by stream information, we mean IO owner information is available, then we can separate out two sequential accesses. We use the abbreviation MS to represent uh, the multi-stream. Finally, we look at the property of inter-arrival time between our requests. Modern storage system usually contains lots of background tasks. There is a possibility that the system state will change when the system is idle. For example, there is a higher chance that the disk head will not in the same position if two consecutive requests are, se are separated by 50 minutes compared to 50 milliseconds. The inter-arrival time property will define consecutive I.O. requests with a long interval between accesses as non-sequential. We use the abbreviation IT to represent inter-arrival time. To briefly summarize, the Previous examples show that the canonical consecutive access ratio is too restrictive in practice and is insufficient to distinguish different access patterns. We need to explore other uh, metric alternatives that capture important properties so that we can calibrate locality accurately. If all metrics provide the same view towards sequentiality, then it doesn't matter which definition to use. Otherwise, it's necessary to pick a metric that best aligns with the use case and study the correlation between different metrics. We use standard statistic tools to study correlation between metrics with large data set, which I will explain how we did it in a moment. Before we dive into the methodology, we first show a table of how we integrate properties into metrics. The left part of the table shows a number of metrics based on consecutive access ratio. For example, we define M1 as the canonical consecutive access ratio. M2 is M1 plus strided range, meaning that small strides will be considered as a sequential. 
M3 is M1 plus the support for multi-stream. M5, for example, is M1 plus strided range and multi-stream. The X symbol stands for if the property is included in the metric. We group M1 to M8 into a metric family F1 because they all derive from M1. Similarly, another set of metrics are based on consecutive bytes accessed. We name metric M9 to M16 as metric family F2. Metric score in F2 are usually uh, several kilobytes, whereas metric score in F1 are ratio-based, so they have different ranges. To compare metrics that have different ranges, we consider the rank order instead of specific metric values. To see how rank orders map to correlation values, let's, let us look at the following examples. For demonstration purposes, we assume 200 storage traces. We rank all traces from most sequential to most random based on two metrics, for example, M9 and M13 in this table. The numbers in the table refers to the trace ID. We can see that the two orders are very consistent. So this means a high correlation for M9 and M13. Another example shows comparison of rank order by M1 and M9. The orders are different in many cases, so it means they are weakly correlated. Finally, we show comparison of rank order by M3 and M9. We can see that some of the traces ranked very high by M3 are ranked very low by M9. This shows that the two rankings are very inconsistent so they are negatively correlated. We have 16 valid uh, metrics, so they are total 256 metric pairs. We compute a correlation number for each of the metric pair. We use Spearman's row to study the entire ranking order correlation and the Kendall's tail to study the partial ranking order correlation. For those who are not familiar with those two terms, Consider the concept of added distance. The input of added distance is two sequences. The output is the number of steps to transform from one sequence to the other. Similarly, the input of Spearman's row or Kendall's tau is two ranked list for a metric pair. The output is a correlation value. A correlation of one means highly correlated, minus one means negatively correlated. So in this example, the a correlation of metric pair M9 and M1 is 0 0.12. Then we look up the a correlation value in the color panel and fit it into the matrix. Similarly, we compute the correlation number for metric pair M9 and M13 and insert it to the corresponding cell in the matrix. As we go along like this, we build a correlation matrix. The matrix axis show each cell's metric pair and which family they belong to. The purpose of this matrix is to study correlation within family, across families, and the overall correlation. Because the matrix is symmetric, we can split the matrix into top left and the bottom right region to have more data in one figure. We performed a comprehensive and a systematic study of I.O. sequentiality across different traces and for different metric pairs. We used 294 EMC VMAC traces, having at least one gigabyte writes and reads. We also selected 94 public traces, covering a wide range of applications. Both datasets cover sequential and random patterns, as we discussed in the paper. We will present results from the public traces in this talk so that others can repeat our experiment. Now we move on to evaluation. First, we would like to know if our metrics can rank our trace consistently or not. The figure plots the Spearman's row for the public traces. We split the figure into top left and the bottom right region. The bottom right region represents results for all accesses, 
meaning that we include both reefs and rights. We see high correlation regions and the weak correlation regions. The blue rectangle region shows that the correlation of metric across family is weak. The average correlation for F1 is as low as 0 0.1. Within metric family F2, the average correlation is 0 0.9. Pretty much all metrics are highly correlated, which shows I.O. size is a strong and consistent factor when considering sequentiality. We found that many F2 metrics show identical values close to one, which shows the stability of metrics when incorporating the CBA property, and that M9 is a good enough metric without adding additional properties. We also analyzed read accesses in the top left region because reads have to be serviced while writes could be buffered. Sequentiality matters to read accesses. The read accesses results are qualitatively very similar to all accesses result. We noticed that more than one third of the pairs of metrics are negatively correlated. This suggests their ranking were at least partially reversed, which is unexpected result. The reason behind is that some traces in the data set strongly match with one property. Other traces match the other property. Therefore, therefore we see reversed ranking when the two properties are combined are dif in different ways. As a system researcher, we should be really careful because negatively correlated metrics can change the result completely. Well, the previous analysis was on all of the traces. Next, we focus on just the most sequential and the most random traces because we tend to use a single metric to measure both sequential and random axes. We might hope that sequentiality metrics are at least consistent at the extreme cases. But are they consistent? No, they are not. We focus on the top 25% most sequential and most random ranking list to determine if they are consistent across metrics. The figure plots the Kindle's tau to compare partial rankings. Correlation for the top 25% most sequential and the, the most random ranking list are plotted in the top left and the bottom right regions. For the most random part, there is a low correlation between metric families, the F1 family is less internally consistent than F2. There are a lot of pink colors where they're supposed to be yellow, so the correlation score will lower overall. The most sequential part looks slightly better, but this shows that sequentiality metrics are not consistent even for the most sequential or the most random traces. Again, we see a lot of negatively correlated matrix pairs in this experiment. Next, we briefly summarize how sequentiality change over time and how sequentiality metrics capture these changes. In, in this figure, we selected four metrics and calculate sequentiality every 10 minutes. We found each curve has its own pattern and doesn't quite match the other curves. Like in our previous analysis, in terms of temporal sequentiality, metrics from family two based on consecutive bytes accessed are more consistent with, than metrics based on consecutive access ratio. We provide more interesting observations in the paper. To summarize, our work demonstrates the challenges of designing a consistent definition of sequentiality from the both spatial and the temporal perspectives. Although there may not be a sequentiality matrix for all use cases, we suggest system researchers consider the following principles if possible. First, I.O. size matters. The canonical sequentiality definition fails to capture the impact of I.O. size. As we demonstrated, we in including I.O. size in sequentiality metrics 
there is a greater consistency to quantify axis patterns. Second, a strided range matters. The strictly consecutive definition of sequentiality is too restrictive in practice, since many storage systems have their internal read-head unit, non-sequential axes with small strides are effectively treated as a sequential. Third, when a metric for sequential axes is based on a single property, it cannot perfectly represent all workloads and all situations. Therefore, a system designer should therefore apply domain knowledge to design the metric they want and state what sequentiality definition to use. In conclusion, we assert the definition of sequential I.O. is poorly defined. That concludes my talk. Now I would like to answer your questions. Yes. Hi, uh, Peter Desnoyers, Northeastern. Um, it's definitely interesting looking at this. What um, what I would definitely be what I would be interested in seeing more of is clearly definitions of sequentiality aren't useful in a vacuum. Um, you know, they're not. It's not a philosophical thing. It's a metric we use to predict performance on real systems or to design real systems to take to perform best on a workload and it turns out that each of these uh, different ways of defining sequentiality corresponds to you know the behavior best handled by some particular system in most cases in some cases maybe not and they're not as good a definition but I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, we have a preliminary experiment to try to, say, uh, build a cache and you apply different sequentiality metrics to see if they, the, 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 uh, the numbers are different. Actually, we did observe a difference if you apply different sequentiality metrics Thank as you. a cache, as an example. <laughs>